Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Today we're going to be talking about five things that school did not teach you, especially in private school, because I went to private school. They did not teach me this. So number one is what is a dividend? A dividend is a portion of profit that a company will pay out to you and you receive a dividend by investing in these companies on the stock market. Yeah, and then when investing in these companies on the stock market, and these are like the most of the dividend payers are your household names like Altria, like Clorox, like Procter and Gamble, AT and T, Microsoft, uh, Coca Cola, things of that nature. It's a list online that gives you a list of dividend kings and aristocrats. But like Alex said, it's a portion of the profits that they pay uh, to you, and that's so you when you buy a stock when you buy a stock a stock that pays dividends let's use coca-cola for instance they will pay you in quarterly increments a portion of their profits in the form of a dividend and then that's on top of the appreciation or the stock price going up so every quarter for let's use coca-cola as an example it'll pay you a check uh every quarter and you have the option to reinvest that money to buy more shares so your dividend check could be higher or you can take that money and do whatever you want with it but it's it's a benefit or um or incentive for you being an owner and said company number two is uh etf what is the etf etf is extreme exchange traded fund um you can i mean index funds are etfs like the spy and things like that but an etf is just a uh, active mutual fund so what I mean is you get a concept of like, let's say, uh, automobiles or like um, manufacturer, auto manufacturer. So they have one an ETF called car. So all the car manufacturers are in one ETF or one stock symbol. And then when you buy the ETF, you get a percentage ownership in all of the different stocks. And the reason why people buy ETFs, because you have one for the S&P 500 called SPY. But the reason why people buy ETFs is they don't want an individual stock because buying individual stocks is more risky. So they rather have a consortium of the stocks that's in, a, in uh, the same like like minded group or the same sector or something like that to invest in all of them. And it, it it's pros and cons to them both. You won't get the appreciation of being in one stock and it going up, but you won't have the risk of if one stock went bankrupt and you don't have to sit there and do the due diligence homework on all the stocks that you have in your portfolio if you buy individual stocks. So you just buy one stock to cover the whole sector. If you believe in a sector, like I said, automobiles or home builders or just the S&P 500 in general, you can just buy that ETF and you can look online for different ETFs for different sectors or different investment ideas. Buy that. Even marijuana has one. I think it's weed or CAS. I can't remember this stock ticker symbol. And then you could just buy a consortium of the companies that is in that sector instead of just looking for one individual company. Number three is what compound interest is. Compound interest is, I'm just going to use a quick example. Like Kirby was saying, if you invest in uh, the SPY ETF, which is the S&P 500, um, the average return is 10% over a long period of time. So think about it like this. You invest $10,000 into the SPY, you get 10%, say, one year. That's 10% of $10,000. The following year, now it's 10% of $11,000. And then it just continues to compound. And the more you invest over a period, a long period of time, that compound interest grows and grows and grows. And um, I think, who was it that said it was the sixth or eighth wonder of the world, something like that? So Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, seventh yeah. wonder of the world, yeah. Yeah, so um, really does make a big difference. If you guys want to check out how that works, there's actually several compound interest calculators online where it just requests like different information, like how much are you contributing monthly, what's the interest rate, and so forth, so far and so forth. And Alex, you're absolutely right. And with dividends, if you reinvest the dividends to buy more stock, that's compound interest on top of compound interest of the stock appreciation. So you're double dipping on the compound interest when you buy dividend investing stocks. So you get the compound of appreciation of the stock value. And then if you reinvest in a dividend into the stock, you get the compound interest of the dividend because every pay, every dividend check will be higher than the next one. If you reinvest it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, number three. So, so me number, oh, you was number three. I'm number four. Uh, why paying yourself first matters. Okay. This is what, Paying yourself first 
mean. Paying yourself first don't mean I make $1,000 a month or I make $5,000 a month. I want to go to the club, so I need to pay myself first so I can go to the club because I work for it. That is everybody's mentality when they get paid. Work hard, play hard. Paying yourself first means as soon as you get your paycheck, and we'll just stick to a small number like $10,000 a month, 10%. 10% of the money should be paid to you first, meaning 10% should go in a savings account. But most people look at the savings account just like a checking account. If you have a problem and you can't and you can't uh, separate yourself from money or you can't control money, then go over to a money market account, a brokerage account. Hell, you can put it in the CD, anything that will stop you from taking the money. So your first, your first line item on your budget should be pay yourself. So that will guarantee that you will have money set aside for future endeavors and in the future. And then that's all it means is pay yourself first, not pay yourself to hang out with the, hang out with the boys. If your paycheck is thin, and if you say, if I pay myself 10%, I can't live, then you need to find a way to uh, shrink your life, your life creep down. So 90% of your paycheck will uh, afford you the ability to live because that is how you will gain uh, financial freedom, financial wealth, and then it will prepare you for when emergencies happen in your life that you will have the funds to cover. And number five is why tracking your money data matters. And I would say it's because most people do not know where their money goes at all. And right. there's different ways people can work out a budget. Um, but I feel like a budget is almost like a diet. And I try to find not shortcuts, but simpler ways to just execute on saving money, such as like paying yourself first. If you pay yourself first, the rest will just fall in line, in my view. Because as soon as you pay yourself first, that's the first most important thing that you should do. And then you're forced to live on the rest of your money. I think that can kind of go hand in hand. Um, but tracking your money data as far as Kirby laughs at this, but me and my wife, we track the contents of the package at the grocery store and the prices. But it's just it's paying attention to where every dollar is going. Um, you know, be conscious of how much you're actually driving, um, because especially with gas prices up now. Uh, for instance, my wife and I, we live close to work. Um, you know, driving to work isn't a big deal, but if we want to go see family, friends, we're starting to fill up, you know, maybe once a week, whereas it could be once every two weeks, but we can afford it. But it's things like that. If you're actually in a crunch where you have to save money, you need to start looking at where everything is, where all your money coming in is, how much that is, and how much are your expenses and all the little extra expenses that you don't need, start to cut those out and see where you actually your money actually be uh actually grow from that and before closing out i want to jump on that one also uh two things um the reason of tracking your money alex said it perfectly the other uh things i want to add on to it is if you tell your money what to do then you'll be all right but if you don't tell your money what to do then your money's going to tell you what to do it will always be a scenario that comes up where where if you just got money sitting there and you didn't and you didn't allocate it to a certain uh, thing in your life, then you'll be like, oh, well, I can use the money to go do this. I can use money to go do that. And that is why tracking your money is important. The other thing is, is once you have the money, your items down on paper and you can see where your money's going, you can literally look and see, hey, if I trim back this a little bit, it can give me more money for food. If I trim back the Netflix, the cable bill and all this, if I take this off because I'm really not using cable, it start making your mind do a mental exercise to see what you really need in your life instead of what you want in your life. And then when you eliminate the wants, it gives you extra capital to be able to branch out and do what you want because you already paid yourself the 10 percent and then you find extra capital and then maybe you can go out and get pizza or hang out with your friends with the extra capital you uh you find in your budget once you see where your needs and wants are that you can eliminate a cable bill and maybe you can go out and have dinner with friends once a month just to uh, once you eliminate the wants out of your life. But you can't do that until you know where all your money is going to see if you even have money at the end of your month. With all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.